Now, um, the other day we talked about how to handle sins already. I'm not going to uh, repeat that. But mainly this morning what we talked about is how to handle and any kind of problems, negative thinking, negative feelings, being affected by people, negative subconscious mind, no matter what it is, that we realize that we are being affected. And then we'll ask God for wisdom how to handle it. So that's, that's um, what we talked about this morning. Basically, we realize what, uh, how we are affected. Now, before we talk about marriage, I'm going to explain a little more uh, about uh, one question someone asked uh, just now. And uh, the person said, what if the husband is so, you know, lack of love, no love, no response, no appreciation. What I'm saying all this morning is about how we behave, not about them, because it's hard to change them that we realize that in order to have a good marriage, it takes two persons. And it, it had to start from the beginning. But now, even when it's too late, very late, that we can still work on it. But we have to accept that it's very hard for the other person to change. So it's for us to accept that and not to be affected. When I talk about appreciate other people, I'm talking about we appreciate them. Not to expect them to appreciate us. They won't. Unless they, they have been they have learned this, they have been trained in this. If not, they don't have motivation to appreciate us. Because most people are not like that. So for us, in a difficult marriage, how can we have joy? How can we have strength? We have to stop taking garbage from the other person. Because the person will keep giving garbage if he has problem. He will keep yelling or complaining and never appreciate. So we don't expect to get much encouragement from them. We expect from them we'll be, be disappointed. What I've been talking this, about this morning is some people, you discern that they have problems. We have to, in a way, give up. Now, give up doesn't mean we don't treat them nicely. We treat them nicely. But we give up expecting anything good from them unless they change. Then you just turn off what they say, how they treat you. We cannot, you know, I know for some people's marriage, it's too hard to expect anything from the spouse. Then we have to have strength from God alone. But we still can look for good things in their person and enjoy their part. So this morning, Mostly, it's talking about how to handle ourselves, that we're not affected by the other person. And in a moment, I'm going to talk about marriage, how to build up the marriage. And, uh, but first, you understand that uh, when I talk about appreciate the other person, is for us to appreciate. They won't appreciate us unless they, they have been changed, they've been transformed. You have any question about that? Then? So when you have someone very difficult to live with, the, the goal is not to change them. It's very hard to change them. The goal is to change ourselves, so we turn off what they give to us, the negative things they give to us. But we can remember the good things they give, and then we can rejoice in it. And we're happy, no matter how little they give, we are happy for that. And then the bad things they do, just forget about it. And, and just rejoice in the Lord. And don't think about it. As I said, the mind can concentrate one thing only. Just concentrate in the Lord, in Jesus Christ, all day long say, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me forever. Now when you sing, you feel better? So concentrate in the goodness of God, okay? So now I'm gonna go into marriage, how to build up marriage. It takes two persons to build up the marriage. And then as pastors or leaders, we can try to help couples to have better marriage, especially the leader themselves. The people who serve God, <coughs> and also 
the pastors, it's very important that the pastors have good marriage. I know for many people, the difficulty is so big already. It's very hard. So we have to discern how the marriage is and how much we can restore. And before I start with how to handle the problem, I first I will talk about the difference between male and female. First, I want to just uh, talk about the difference between male and female. And um, it's, it's a sad thing. Many people don't know the difference between male and female and don't know how to be a good spouse before they get married. And many people think they have, they are, you know, they are an adult and then they can ma get married. Most people think that I can, you know, when I'm an adult, I can get married, I'll be okay. It's not true. Most people are not suitable for marriage. Now, I, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Most people are not suitable for marriage because they don't even, they don't even know how to handle their own problems. <laughs> they don't know how to handle their emotions. So when they get married, what they're going to do is they hurt the other person. So don't rush into marriage. And it's important for the church to have instruction on marriage so people learn how to build up the marriage. Okay, the difference between male and female. I talked about that briefly the other day. So uh, now, because of time, it's also very brief. Many men concentrate in tasks, doing something. They get excitement when they do something they're excited about. Men usually don't look for relationship that much, they generally. And when men talk, they don't talk about what they are happy about, they, they're not, what they are unhappy about. They usually talk about jobs, what they do, the difficulties in a job, and how they can do a better job. Or they talk about TV, or they talk about football, sports. So men usually set their eyes on tasks and activities. And men look for a wife, what kind of wife he likes? A wife that doesn't demand much. Just have fun, relax, have fun together, and, and help him, help him and everything. Uh, take care of things in the family. And I have to say this, hope you don't mind. The man expect the woman to have sex. For men, it's a big thing. And many people dating, they always think about when I can have sex with the woman. So I encourage you to Educate your young women before they get married. Don't think that when a man say to you, I love you, I like you, I like your body, that means they really love you. It doesn't mean that. It just means I want to have sex with you and after that, uh, I might leave you. I might be with you, I might leave you. So many men, they concentrate on sex and, and I have to say this, even Christians, Christian men, they're attracted mostly a lot of time by sex. So it's only mature Christians who really want to dedicate their life to God and make the best of their life that they would keep themselves from having premarital sex or having extramarital sex. There are so many news of pastors having extramarital sex and then they were you know, discover and that they lost a position as a pastor. It has happened so many times. Because if they don't handle their lust, it's going to come up. It's going to come up. And then, especially when the wife doesn't like him, the wife complains a lot. And then the, the man find a young woman who really admires him. Every time he does anything, the woman was looking at him. Every time he comes in, the woman was very happy. And this pastor will find more satisfaction in this woman than in his, than in his wife. And then it's very easy for him to fall into temptation. So let us all realize that. That is a fact. That is a fact. So we be aware of that. Now for me, because I treasure my life, I see that God has given me so many teachings and my life can go higher and higher. If I have any lust, not, you know, I'm not talking about sex, 
If I look at a pretty woman and have lust, God doesn't like it. So whenever I notice I have it, I say no to it. And I just bless the person as a person. And don't think of that person as a beautiful, sexy person. Just think of that person as a person. But I have to say that all pastors have to handle this. And I want to say something related. When we lay hands on women, especially beautiful women, we have to be very careful. And the catchers too. It's better to have women catchers for women. I have seen catchers who try to take advantage of the woman when catching the woman. So that's something we have to be aware of, that men have these traps, but the men are more in the task. Now for women, what's most important for them is to be loved. Relationship, to be loved. And women, usually, when they love someone, they're willing to really give herself to the person, to do anything for the person, to cook, to take care of him, and to, uh, to be faithful to the person for a lifetime. Now, but many women are not like that today, but then the traditional women, they, are, they, they want to be loved. And if they find someone who loves them, they will really uh, be faithful to the person and follow the person. And women look for understanding. Now for men, it's different. When men have problems, they like to go to sleep or go somewhere and have fun. When men have problems, they don't want to face it. They won't, don't want to talk about it. They want to find somewhere they can be alone or they can uh, do some activity so they can forget about the problem. Usually men want to forget about the problem. Now, if they handle it, they just handle it. They don't want to think about the problem anymore. But for women, when women have problems, it really bothers them. Any any small thing, any small thing, it bothers them. That's why when I counsel most couples, I ask, ask them, um, how's the marriage? The men usually say, no problem. We eat together every day. I live in the same home every day. I do my job, I bring money back. No problem. But the woman don't, don't just look for this. She said, he doesn't listen to me. He has no patience with me. He's more interested in TV, in other things than me. So for the woman to have a happy home is to, be, to have love, to have attention. And also when women have pressure, it's like a pressure cooker. Do you know a pressure cooker? Then there's pressure built up, so you don't have to cook for a long time. Then, uh, you know, most, most parts, you have to cook for a long time. But pressure cooker, you can cook for a short time. It will keep the pressure. And then it will finish the food with much less cooking. That's pressure cooker. And for women, when they have pressure and any unhappiness, they become like a pressure cooker. Very unhappy. They want to talk to someone. They want to talk to someone about it. And a man say, don't talk about it. I don't like to listen to you. I don't want to hear it. Men want to avoid. So when we understand that, both have to adjust. For any man, they want to get married, you have to get used to listening to problems. You might think it's a small problem, but for the woman, it's a big problem. When you don't listen to her, it's a big problem. But for men, they say, it's nothing. If no, he doesn't listen to me, I'll just walk away. But for the wife, they don't take it that way. If you don't listen to her, she'll have so much frustration. You have a frustrated wife. You have a frustrated marriage. You suffer for the rest of your life. Do you agree? Yes. If you have a frustrated wife, you suffer for the rest of your life. So, if you want to get married, men, and train your young people, be prepared to listen. Don't just think of sex, you know. For men, most men, they want to get married, they say, I want to have sex. That's, that's what they think about. How beautiful this woman is, how gentle she is, how nice she is, but after the marriage, 
When a woman doesn't get what she gets, she gets frustrated. And she becomes wordy. Now you notice unmarried girls, single girls, when they talk, they don't talk so, they're not so long-winded. They're not so long-winded. But after they get married, they become long-winded. Why? You can tell, you know, a wife from a single girl. A single girl don't talk so long. But the married woman talks long because the man doesn't listen. And then she will keep repeating, keep repeating. She wants to change her husband. But the more she talks, the more he turns away. Do you find it true? Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. So how do we adjust? First, the man need to realize, you want a good marriage? You don't want the woman to nag you every day? Be nice to her, listen to her, respect her, see her as the most important person in your life. If you don't see her as the most important person in life, in your life, don't marry her. You really, you know, you're moved by God to see that this person really is the right person for you, and then you marry. Don't just say, wow, she has a beautiful body, I'll, I'll marry her. And you might regret afterwards. So that you can, and even if you don't, now you're married, and you don't think she's the most important person in your life, we have to change our thinking. Let me ask you, is there any other person in your life other than your wife or your husband is so important in your life? No. Is there any other person? No. 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 The husband and wife is the most important person because that person will stay with you as long as we live. So it is worth it to put effort into the person, right? But most people don't think that way. I would say most of you just don't have the wisdom. They just don't think. She's the most important person, so I should put effort into her and love her. If not, we both will suffer. But most men don't think that way. Or most women don't think that way. And so, what they did was they keep nagging, keep complaining, get angry, and it hurts the marriage. Okay, then how, what do we do? First, we need to be trained to listen to people and respond to their feelings. For instance, the wife says, Oh, I'm so happy to, I'm happy today. Oh, it's so hard to handle the children. They don't listen. Oh, they don't do so well in school. And generally, the, the man will start to teach. Now, men in handling problems, they are like a firefighter. They will say, this is not good advice. He would say, beat the child. Yell at him so he'll listen to you. Or, don't worry about them. Forget about them. Don't feel so bad. Usually, men would generally advise the woman. But this is not what the woman wants. The woman wants empathy. They want you, so all husbands here listen, they want you to say, Oh, it's so hard for you to take care of your children all day long. It's so difficult, and they don't obey you, and they don't listen to you. You are doing a very difficult job, and I appreciate that. Let me ask the wife here. Do you like your husband to talk to you like that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because then he will understand your difficulty and have feelings for your difficulties. And then you will love to talk to your husband. And the husband, now, and then for the wife, you need to learn not to name and just to ask questions. Oh, the children have this problem. What can we do? Instead of complaining. Complaining is like, you did not do a good job. You did not do a good job, and I have to do the job myself. That way the husband gets turned off. So the wife has to take away the complaint and just say, I have this problem, and please help me with your wisdom. Now, respect your husband. And say, please help me with your wisdom. Let us face this together. Let us pray for it together. Let us handle it together. And it's very important for you to help me. I need your help. Man wants and needs respect. Woman wants love and understanding. Now say this. Men want respect. Men want respect. That the man want the woman to say, 
oh, tell me what to do. Uh, please help me. Your help is important. They want the respect. And a woman wants understanding. If you say, oh, it's difficult for you. I know, it's so hard. And you've been working so hard, I appreciate that. And every day for so many hours, you've been taking the children and the cooking and everything. And I really appreciate that. And I want to give you some good time when I come home. Now, husbands, do you do that? I want to give you some happy time. Let us go out for a walk. Let us rejoice together. Let us sing together. Do you do that to your wife? <laughs> For well, many husbands, they say, many husbands, they will say, women submit to me. Women submit. Kneel down. Sit down. Don't talk. Listen to me. Now, the Bible does say women submit to your husband. But let me tell you this. The Bible says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loves the church. Let me ask you, how does Jesus treat the woman or the problematic people in his ministry. Did he say, shut up, sit down? No. No. He said to the woman, take heart, don't worry, relax. Daughter, your faith has healed you. And Jesus responded to people's feelings. When Peter said, please leave me, I'm a sinner. So he has a lot of guilt feeling. But Jesus said, don't worry, fear not. You will be a catcher of men. You will catch many people. I will use you greatly. You are important. So Jesus makes people feel good, right? Yes. 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 Jesus only accused and accused the Pharisees who don't want to repent. But for the parable, I mean, disciples, he did not, you know, did not accuse them. Even when he pointed out their sins, they would say, you have faith, and you can move the mountain. And with you, everything is possible. And you can do greater things than I do. Can you imagine that? Yes. Now, Jesus did not say you can do better things than I do. Nobody can do better things. But there are people who do greater meetings than Jesus, right? They can do greater ministries, greater meetings, but they cannot do better things. So Jesus can say, you can do greater things than I. Of course, on earth, on, in heaven, no one can, you know, be doing greater things than Jesus. So we realize that Jesus always talked to people with love. Because the Bible says, love your wife as Christ has loved the church. And also about submission. I want you to write down these words. 1 Peter 5, 3. 1 Peter 5, 3. The Bible does talk about submit to your leaders. Submit to your leaders. But then in 1 Peter 5, 3, it says that, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. Now when, in a church, the members should submit to the pastor. But the pastor should not lord over the people. He should be a good example and guide them and love them and listen to them. Listening doesn't mean they don't submit. Listen means I want to find out your needs. I want to find out how you are. I want to find out your feelings so I can respond to your feelings. But many husbands, I heard I just someone told me, they would do this. Woman, listen, don't say anything, cook. And when we eat, you eat in the kitchen, I eat in the sitting room. I, I, I cannot understand this custom in Africa. I hope you change it. <laughs> if you want to love your wife and children, do you want to love your children and let your children see your love and learn from you, we should eat with them and with your wife. And we wait until the wife finishes cooking and then eat together. And actually, the husband should help the wife to cook and to wash dishes. Now, do you do that here? No. If you want a good marriage, do the chores with her to let her know it's not she alone. 
for you might say I'm earning money outside. I do a lot of work, but in the daytime as you do all the work in the home, it's also a lot of work. It's difficult. Actually, house chores is tiring. So when you go home, if you want a good marriage, a good marriage like my wife's, my marriage with my wife, now in my cell phone you don't see it now because it's uh, uh, this broadcasting live. This is a picture. I have a picture. I have a picture in everywhere in my calendar, but I didn't bring my calendar. So when we take pictures, usually our heads stick together. We lean on each other, and we do different poses to have fun. And I want to make her happy. And every day now she's waiting for me to come home, counting the time. Because she likes the time with me. And that way I have a wife that is fully supportive of me and my ministry. Then I don't have an enemy at home. Now some people have an enemy at home. And it's painful. Do you want to live happily? If you want to live happily, understand the other person. For the man to understand a woman, she needs your love, your care, your understanding, your support, and everything to make her feel good, feel loved, and have time to walk together. I, uh, do you go out with your husband and wife and take a walk outside? Or have vacation? Okay, I hope you do. Have some time. It doesn't have to spend a lot of money. You can just walk to somewhere and just take a walk together. Do you hold hands? Okay. Now those are gestures of love. You might say, well it doesn't look good when my members see me hold hands with my wife. But actually it's a good example. That's why my pastor asked me for a photo. I give him a photo of me and my wife. Even though she's not coming, I always give people the picture of us, the two of us together, because we are one together. And that way I have a full support and I have a happy home. I enjoy life, I enjoy God, I enjoy marriage, and I enjoy talking with her about ministry. If I have anything, I will discuss with her. Do you like that? Yes. Now, I want to say this. Husband and wife change to another personality when they are not treated well. Now before the marriage, you find your wife very happy, very nice, didn't nag you, and very happy, but after marriage she changed. She nag too much, talk too much and get frustrated. Why? Because she was not treated well. When she was not treated well, there's a lot of frustration and anger stored up, and she cannot handle it. You don't just say, forget about it, take a walk, take a bath, and enjoy yourself. She cannot do it. Only our love can change her. And it's not command. Forget about it. Pray to God. Ask God to forgive you. But treat her nicely. And then for the wife, you understand the man doesn't like long-winded words. So be short and then say something that shows our respect, the respect and you're important. And your support is important. And we can work this out together. We can um, build up a good marriage. We have to have good children. So for a good marriage to work, it has to be two-sided. So as a pastor or a leader, we need to counsel the couple. Now it's very difficult. Now I talk about counseling. It's very difficult. Now some people have a tendency just to say, pray together, forgive each other, and love each other. It doesn't work. Now that's why this morning I talk about, in my teaching, you notice I always talk about steps. Now think about a couple come to you. They fight against each other, they hate each other, they dislike each other, and they are about to have a divorce. They come to you. And then you say, okay, repent in front of God, repent, kneel down and repent, go home and love each other, and forgive each other, and say nice words. Will it change? 
commands don't change people. But many people, many pastors have a tendency, command, you have to submit, you have to obey, you have to forgive. He wants you, but he doesn't have the strength. But maybe he doesn't want you. So what do we do in marriage counseling? The first thing I usually do is, now you can write down, this is about marriage counseling. And it will help you too in the process of your marriage. So in marriage counseling, we can first ask the two persons, do you treasure this marriage? Do you treasure this marriage? Do you want this marriage to go better? Do you have faith this marriage will go better? Oh, actually, this is the second question. The first question is, I'm sorry, that should be the first question. Do you want your marriage go, to go better? That's the first one, okay? And then do you want to work on it? And number two, can you say to their person some good thing about him or her and appreciate him or her? And I want them to look at each other and say, and try to say things that are personal. But I find most couples I counsel, they cannot say anything personal, relational. They usually say, oh, she cooks very well. Let me ask you, if your husband just say, what is good about you is you cook very well, does it make you very happy? Yes. No, because that's not the most important thing. You're like a servant, you cook very well. What you like most for a husband to say, she's the most important person in my life. She's nice to me, she listens to me, she comforts me, she makes me feel happy, right? You like this better? Yes. You don't just want your husband to say she cleans the floor very well. <laughs> then you're like a, servant, right? like a servant. So, we, in our daily life, pay attention to your husband and wife. And we need to build up the relationship to be able to say that. So we need to treat each other nicely. And then the other person responds. Whenever he or she does anything good, always appreciate. Every time my wife does anything good, I always appreciate. Even when she laughs, when, when I say, I, uh, uh, let's date, let's go out for a walk. And then she'll be very happy. And then I say, I'm so happy to see you laugh. I'm happy to see you happy. And then she will be happier. I always say things to show that I I am observing the happy things and the good things about her. And I will always let her know. And this should be a life habit for all of us. We should say good things to people, good things to a church member, to our pastors, to our husband and wife and the children. Don't think that this will spoil, spoil them. It won't spoil them. But at the same time, we we'll tell them, when we love God, we follow God, we obey God, God will bless us. So we need to submit to God. We, we should obey God. So we we'll ask them, can you say something good about their person, especially relational? And um, but generally, they don't cannot say much. And then I will say, okay, do you want to work on marriage? And then they say yes. Okay. And then I will say, okay, the first thing. Because for marriage to work, most important thing is for two persons to commit to work on it. So the third thing is, I ask for a com commitment. Are you willing to commit to work on a marriage, no matter how difficult it is? No matter how unnatural it is. For many people, they say it's unnatural. For many men, they say, to, for me to say, I love you to my wife is very unnatural. And then I asked them, did you say something like that before marriage? Some of them said yes. But how come it changed after marriage? Because after marriage, there are so many fights, so many negative words. They forget about it. It becomes very unnatural. So can we be committed? I'm asking you now. Can you be committed to your marriage? Let me ask you this. As people who serve God, which is more important? To commit to the family and commit to ministry. Which one is first? The marriage, yes. Now the number one should be to God. Commitment to God is number one. And then to marriage. 
and then to ministry. Because if the marriage is not good, the ministry will not go well. And also, the marriage will build them up as people who can minister. With my relationship with my wife, she helps me to understand human nature more. She helps me to understand women more. She helps me to understand people's feelings more. It helps me to be a better minister. If I'm just alone, I will only serve from the perspective of a, of a man. But when I have her support, I can understand women more. I can understand people's feelings more. And then I can meet people's needs. Now you notice that I talk a lot about people's needs and feelings, right? I talk about the difficulty of overcoming feelings. That's why I say, it's not just saying rejoice, rejoice, I can rejoice. We cannot just rejoice when we say rejoice, rejoice. It doesn't work that way. We have to clear the garbage. We have to believe that we are important in the sight of God. And then we have to declare that God loves me. God loves me even when no one loves me. So I understand it takes steps for people to learn to like themselves, to enjoy themselves, to have the strength from the Lord. Because all this, it came from my wife and other people that I help, they respond to me. So that helps me to understand people better. If a pastor has problem relating to his wife, his relationship with the members will also probably be mostly commandment. You have to do this, you have to do that. But if he has a good relationship with the wife, then he understands the feelings of the people. Then he can respond to the feelings of the people. Then he can help the people better. Let me ask you, does Jesus know the feeling of the people? Yes. yes. Does Jesus just tell people, believe, obey, submit? Jesus cares about the people first. It's the love of God first. God first loves us in order to change us. So we realize that in order to build up a good marriage, we need to, be, to have the commitment. So I hope we're all here, we have a commitment. Yes, I want to build on my marriage. And I want to say it's very, very difficult. It's more difficult than handling the problems ourselves. If you're single, it's easier to handle the personal problem, much easier. Reason is, you just handle yourself. But with the other person, it's much harder. And I want to say this, people have different levels of handling their own problems. There are husband and wife who have so much frustration in their life, it's hard for them to change. Some people, it's easier to change. But many people are hard to change. It's a fact, it's a fact. So it's very important for people who are not married yet, it's very important to find out the other person and ask God for direction before they get married. If you are married to someone who has power handling his feelings, no matter how hard you work on, it's still difficult to build up the marriage. So we have to realize this. But no matter how hard it is, when we are married, we still need to work on it. And there's always chances of improving it. But it's much harder. So the first thing is for both persons to be healed by Jesus Christ, to be comforted. Because we all have this subconsciousness inside us. The subconsciousness is, Nobody likes me, I'm not important, and the only way to respond to people is to be angry, and, and people are bad. Many people have this subconscious mind, and they are easily hurt, easily offended. So it's hard to change. It's very hard to change. I think many people here agree. It's hard to change a spouse. But I have to say too, it's hard to change YouTube. <laughs> we all are hard to change. So we have to admit, I'm hard to change. But I can change. If I can change 1%, and I can appreciate my husband and wife when he can change 1%. If he can say, good morning, I can say, I'm so happy you say good morning, and I say good morning to him or her. 
So whatever he does, she does, we appreciate. That makes it much easier. So first thing we might need to do is to evaluate the relationship. And then see what we can do. But the first thing we change, the first person to change is who? Ourselves. So that we have more joy, we're not offended by the other person, that we don't nag so much, that we don't get frustrated so easily, that we ourselves have more peace and are willing to love, even when the other person doesn't love me. I'm willing to love, then there is a chance to change. But it's difficult. But we already are in a marriage, and the Bible says no to divorce. So if you are in a difficult marriage, now in a most difficult marriage, what you can do is to build up a, at least a peaceful cohabiting situation. Then you're living together with as much peace as possible. Now at the beginning, it may be hard to have love. Now, two persons, they're fighting against each other. It's very hard to have love. First, you just have a peaceful living together relationship. How can we have the peaceful living together relationship? Just don't nag too much and appreciate everything he does. And when he yells at you, don't take it seriously and have strength from the Lord and still be nice to the person. Forget about the bad things he has and keep treating him nicely. Then there's a chance there'll be more and more peace. If he's angry, you can say, I'm sorry if I make you unhappy. Is there anything I can do? So try to say peaceful words. Say this with me. I'm sorry if I make you unhappy. I'm sorry if I make you unhappy. And what can I do? What can I do? Please forgive me. Are you willing to say this? Yes, sir. Okay. So at least make it peaceful. Whenever he's angry, you say, okay, I hear your needs, I hear your frustration, and we'll work on it. I'll listen to you. So try to calm him down. Try to calm him down so that he's more peaceful. Then at least you don't have a fighting relationship. You understand the first goal? Don't go for, wow, he will hug you every time, he will love you all the time, appreciate you every time. It doesn't happen for good. First, it's just a peaceful relationship. And the next level is more appreciation, gradually more appreciation. And then gradually to restore the love, to restore good feeling. But this takes a lot of work. You have to think about when you are dating. How come at that time there can be so much fun and love and a motivation to care about the other person. How come now there's no motivation? So think about those good times and talk about those good days. The more we talk about the good days, the better it is. And it's very important to pay attention to what we talked about yesterday. Words of grace. Always say, thank you. You're so good. I'm so happy to have you. And then for words of the law, we have to be gentle. Please help this, help me with this. And I thank you for doing this for me. I'm so happy. Now, there's a much more I can say, but I'm stopping here for questions. What basically I'm talking about is have the commitment. Now, if your husband or wife is not willing to have the commitment, you pray for that one day he will commit. And then for us, that we first feel on a peaceful relationship that there is no fight and then you try to treat the other person nicely and appreciate so that gradually there is more and more appreciation and gradually there can be some love built up but it takes a lot of work and a lot of time and it, it takes conscious effort and it's not easy to change the way people talk i've counseled many couples and the way i do it is like this two person and then I'll ask them, are you committed to the marriage? And then what are the good things about your person? They all said that, yes, yes. And then I will say, I will explain to them how to communicate words of grace and how to speak the words of the law nicely. And then I will say, okay, you try to handle one problem in your home peacefully. And then in the process, when they say anything negative, I will stop them and I'll say, think about what you just said. How does it affect your person? I find that most people find it very hard to speak 
transitive words. Very hard to speak nicely. And after one session, they come back next time, they're still repeating the same thing. It's very hard to change the habit. So we have to change ourselves so that we learn to speak nicely to people. Because why is it that so many people, it's so easy to abuse? And I have to say that, including many pastors and including many Christians and many pastors have the habit of accusation. They, they will keep pointing out only the sins of the people. Now I would do to do that too, but I would always say, you have hope, God wants to bless you. When we repent, God is very happy. Whatever you do for God, God is very happy. I always give a lot of positive confirmation, a lot of hope. Instead of just saying, you sin and you're fed God, and so you have all this attack. And so I will always give positive words. Now I will point out the sins of the people, actually in these few days. Have you noticed I point out the sins of the people? Like negative words, negative thinking, negative feelings. Uh, also how people neglect God, don't have a good relationship with God. All this I'm pointing out the sins of people. But I don't point it out in a harsh way. I point it out in a gentle way to give you hope. Okay? And so I find it very hard for people to change. Now if there is a couple here who want to demonstrate, I can have you come out and demonstrate how to counsel. But any question first, any question? If there is a couple here who is willing to come out for counseling, I can demonstrate that. How to help two persons to communicate better. So if a husband and wife is are present present together here.